Hey, we're live. We'll get started in like five minutes. What's up, everybody? We'll go ahead and we'll get started in about five minutes. But uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm DJ Bruce. Um, I run DB Trained out of Columbus. Uh, today I got a group of my middle schoolers here that are going to be showing technique. What's up, Wyatt? What's up? We're on Facebook Live. I just got off work. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you needed a speaker. Oh, we're good. But you guys have one. Yep, we'll go ahead and we'll get started in about five minutes. We'll give everybody a chance to join. Did you have to put something heavy on the edge of the mats? Okay. I'm going to put slides so you have to put the plates on the edge. All right. Let's see. we got eight people on so far. So today, just to kind of review what we're going through. Um, so at my club, one thing that we do to start off every workout, um, we attack the right leg, we attack the left leg, and we shoot double legs. Um, long time ago, uh, Kevin Dresser told me, you know, wrestling's much uh, simpler than people make it out to be. Uh, if you can attack the right leg, you can attack the left leg, you can get off bottom, you can win a national title. Uh, and that's something, that a philosophy that I carry forward with my kids now. Um, so... Again, as we get started, um, it's really simple, right? It's a, for me, it's a high single to the right leg. For me, um, it's a high crotch to the left leg and then just a, a blast double. That's kind of my series, but I leave it up to the kids. I don't tell them which leg attack, but I need you to attack the right leg. I need you to attack the left leg. Um, and that's how we warm up, right? So we do three to the left leg, three to the right leg, three doubles. Uh, we rotate that. We do uh, 27 not finishing, 27 finishing. So we warm up every day with 54 shots. And I know every day when my kids come to practice, they're going to get 54 takedowns. Um, so that's kind of how we're going to get started. Um, I'll say uh, we'll get started here. Uh, let's say in about another minute, it looks like uh, we're, we're kind of at capacity here at around 10 people. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started in a minute. Which one of you two want to start? So Jake and Hap, you guys want to start? So... All right, perfect. All right, so I'm just going to start showing with a little bit of technique um, with uh, two of my middle schoolers. So, Mav, say hi. Hello. Jake, say hi. What's up? Everybody else, that's Carter. What's up? That's Al. Hi. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to just start, and they're just going to warm up like they always would at practice. So, again, what Jake's going to do first is going to have three shots to the, left, or to the right leg. After that, uh, Mav will go, and then we'll rotate to the left leg, and then we'll shoot doubles. So, uh, as they go ahead and get started, here we go. Solid spot. Solid spot. Good. So they're getting to a solid finishing position, but for the first set, they're not going to actually finish. So two more for Mav. One more for Mav. Good. So now we're going to rotate and we're going to go to the left leg. So Jake's going to switch to a high crowd. Good spot and good movement. Good spot, good movement. Good spot, good movement. Good spot, good movement. Moving map, moving map. Good. One more. Good. All right, now we got double legs. So Jake's gonna fire off some doubles. 
Yep. Good. 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 It's getting nice and deep, right? He wants to get to the point where he's ready to finish, but we're not finishing just quite yet. Yep, one more mat, finish it off. Good. So that is the first uh, series that we have right there. Um, I guess, is there any questions? Um, I know there's quite a few people joined now. Uh, anybody got any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. We'll try to get to it. Uh, but we'll switch, right? We'll have Carter and we'll have Al go. Um, and the, really the biggest point here is it's not so much about what technique, it's about your attack in the right leg, right? So the way that Jake attacks and the way that Mav attacks is gonna be different than Carter and Al. So it's not so much of us telling them how to wrestle because as you know, wrestling's different. Everybody has a different way to attack the leg. But the biggest thing for me is when my kids need to have points, I need them to get to the right leg, I need to get them to the left leg, and I need them to go shoot a double. So now we're gonna do the same series with Al and Carter. Um, and we're gonna have Carter start with attacking the right leg. Good. 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 Good out. Head up. Good out. Head up. Yep, you're all right. Finish. Good. All right, left leg quarter. Yep, good. Two more. Good. One more. Good. Left leg out. Good. Good. Yep. All right, doubles, double Carter, double Carter. Good. 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 Come on, three more, Al. Good. So, uh, coming from there, uh, you know, like I said, so how this would work in a normal practice for us is, so we would go three to the left, three to the right, three doubles. We'd go through that three times each. After they've got 27 shots in, then we're going to finish, right? So they do the same series, but now they're going to start finishing. So even when we're not finishing, we're coming up to a good finishing position to know that if we needed to, we can go ahead and get points. And the biggest thing here is about muscle memory and reps, right? I believe that you, if you want to master something, you need to do it 10,000 times, right? And so for me, I know my kids aren't going to do 10,000 shots in a day, but every day they show up to practice, they do 54. And that's before practice gets started. So, I mean, Jake, what do you think? What do you, I mean, you get a good warm-up every time we start? Yeah, good warm-up, get your shots in, you know, every day, just making your technique better. Yeah, what do you think, Mav? What's your, what's your perspective of the warm-up we do every day? It's good because it gets us warmed up and it teaches us how to shoot really good. So what do you think, Carter? Come here. Tell me about your perspective of our warm-up every day. I mean, it's good. I mean, it makes me warm up, gets my technique better, it makes me a better wrestler. Yep. All right, what about you, Al? Bring your ice cream eating <laughs> self over here. Um, it's good because it's really good warm up, and we're already like sweating and stuff by the end of warm up. Yeah, and honestly, like I said, it's the warm up that I've done coming up. I've been very fortunate to be around some high level coaches, and honestly, I'm not recreating the wheel. I just kind of steal from them what I think works well, um, and apply it back to my program and my kids. So I kind of just uh, with that started. Uh, does anybody have any questions, or do you guys want to put anything in the chat before we start showing technique? I'll give it a minute to see if anything comes through. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll just move forward, right? So one of the big things that my kids are having issues right now is just, you know, leg defense, right? When they're getting attacked, we're giving up a lot of points and oftentimes we're letting people deep on our legs to where, you know, in freestyle, we're giving up four. You know, we're giving up two. Uh, we're giving up way too many points, mostly Carter. Right, so my man Carter's gonna come here and he's gonna show us a little bit about head and hands defense. So if Carter grabs a partner, see Carter grabs Jake. So as Jake goes and takes a shot, the biggest thing Carter wants first is his head, right? He lowers his level to stop Jake from penetrating. Right from there, he's got his hands on him, right? And that's even before he gets attacked. So Jake goes ahead and takes the attack. As he does, Carter gets his hips back and he sprawls, right? So, but the first thing that Carter has for his defense 
is going to be his head. The second thing is his hands. And then behind that's his hips. So everybody wants to sprawl when you get attacked. But first, got to lower your level. So Jake goes to lower his level to take a shot, as does Carter. He puts his head down, right? And then after he does, he puts his hands down. And as Jake penetrates, Carter gets his hips down, right? And he smashes. Then we can get into short offense, but we don't have to go from there. But just a quick drill here. We're going to go two and two. So Jake's about to go ahead and take a shot. As he does, Carter's going to do head and hand, get his hips back and back to his feet. So just a quick drill right there. Good. Back to his feet. Boom. Now Carter's going to go on Jake. Good. Good. All right. So that's just another quick drill. That's a, that's a quick drill that we could do, um, you know, just with your kids, and we can kind of build up on the leg defense. So from there, it's just really about as you're attacking, uh, getting attacked, lowering your level to meet his level change, putting your hands on him, so make sure that you have a chance. And then as you defend, getting your hips back, right? So that's kind of the first big thing I wanted to cover, mostly for my man Carter, because he's going to Kansas this weekend to qualify for Fargo. We've got to make sure we keep people off our legs. So uh, kind of from there, we can go to um, just the short offense as you get, uh, you get to your leg attacks. So we'll have Jake show it. So soon Carter takes a shot on him, gets down, right? Jake's first, he's going to have a short elbow, right, as he grabs his chin. As he does, he's going to come kind of pivot, um, sprawl down, and then beat the arm. Go ahead, beat the arm, come around. And we're in freestyle season, so Jake's going to lock up a gut. But that's what we want to do first, right? So as Carter goes ahead, he goes ahead and takes his shot, kind of building on the drill we just did. Jake gets his legs back, short stop, short elbow, comes around, blocks the arm, spins around, comes to his gut, right? Assuming it's freestyle, or that's what we would do. Assuming it's folk style, Jake's going to come down. He's going to take his shot. As he does, block the arm, circle around, come around, drive across right to his back. So these are just a couple quick drills. Uh, that we cool. Warrior Wrestling Club. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you could ask one of our kids, Dylan Hartman, because he's learning the hard way how to do cartwheels. Uh, we do a bunch of forward rolls, a bunch of backwards rolls, cartwheels, um, really anything to kind of get the body going. I mean, really, it's just about making sure that your body's warmed up, because as you know, uh, in the sport of wrestling, you're going to get put in some awkward positions. We want to make sure that we're warmed up before we start firing, before we start scrapping. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how we warm up. Really, like, the biggest thing that I have is I just kind of try to keep it not so routine, right? I want to switch it up. One of the simplest things that I've learned to switch it up is as we're jogging, I make my kids switch directions. Uh, it seems super simple, but the reason I do it is because they're paying attention. And if they're not, I'll know who's not paying attention because they're running in the wrong direction, right? And so the biggest thing is, like, when you're there, our practices are pretty short. We go an hour and 15 minutes, whether it's weightlifting or whether it's uh, wrestling, but we go hard, right? So our warm-up, probably about 10 minutes for jogging. I give them five minutes to stretch on their own. But once we start rocking, again, it's 54 takedowns. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes, but once we're done, they're fully sweating. We give them water, and then we start teaching. So that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of how we're doing it uh, for us, and hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> and Spooner, I appreciate that. I will point the camera lower. Uh, I apologize. We had an iPad, but it's not working, so I'm actually doing this off of my phone. So I guess, is there any other questions you want to put in the chat uh, before we go ahead to the next technique? All right, cool. So we are in freestyle season right now, so one of the things we'll go over is just a simple gut wrench. So we're going to have Carter be flat on the mat. Um, as he does, uh, Alex is going to go ahead and get on top. So as he gets on top, let me come in front so you can see. So Carter is going to come up, let him be a good partner. Uh, as he comes across, he, he snakes that arm in. And as he locks his lock, the biggest thing of, for us and what we want to do as we have this tight is we want to make sure our elbows are down. Right, Al? Yeah. So as we do, Carter, let, let him know if he's squeezing. Go ahead, squeeze, Al. Yep, you can see it on Carter's face, right? So as he does that, he's got his lock tight. He's going to keep his lock tight throughout the gut wrench. Um, and he's going to start driving over. Drive, 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 drive. As he does, pop over. All right, we'll stay on the mat. But that's, that's the technique right there, right? And I think one of the biggest things that I could share here on the technique is simply make sure that your elbows are down. So if Carter stays up and Al just locks up his gut, when he does... Go, you see when he, when he cinches his elbows down? As he does, you can see it on Carter's face. It's, it's tight, 
right? Al, <laughs> Al, he might be in seventh grade, but he's got a pretty tight gut wrench, right? So as he squeezes and he goes ahead and drive, 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 as he does, he gets him to drive over his shoulder, boom, gut wrench right there. So as far as technique goes, um, that is, uh, that's kind of where we are on gut wrench. We can bring Mav back over. We can have Mav quickly show a leg lace because that's one of Mav's favorite. He hit it quite a bit while we were in Indiana. So right here, so we got Jake. So for us, we always know that we're going from gut to lace, lace to gut, right? So Mav's gonna start on top. And when he starts on top and locks up his gut, as he does, you know, Jake's gonna defend it. So as he's defending there, Mav's quickly gonna drive down to his lace. He lifts up one leg as he attacks it. As he does, he jumps over side, locks up that under the thing, and now his arm's on the outside, and as he's gonna roll through and get his lace. Boom. And the biggest thing that I tell my kids when you're hitting a leg lace is just make sure that it's tight, because if it's tight, you can hit it once, twice, three times, depending on how many points you need. But if you watch these senior level guys, you know, when they lock up a leg lace, you know, look at Vito and what he did at the Pan Ams. I mean, look at James Green and what he does always. You know, they lock up a leg lace, it's over. You know, they're going to tech you. And so that's kind of one of the biggest things that I build into my kids. As we're drilling, you know, if you're going to hit a lace, hit it twice, right? Don't get comfortable of hitting it just the one time. Um, because in a match, you got to be able to go. And the biggest thing that I try to communicate is it's not going to be perfect. You might need to go before you have it cinched. But as long as you don't keep yourself out of danger, you're going to be fine. Because once it gets tight, you'll be fine to go. So we run through it one more time. So Mav, go ahead and just tack the leg from the bottom so they can see it, right? So he singles out one leg. As he does, he lifts it up. As he does, you see his jump his hand across and he moves his leg over. As he starts rolling, he locks that up. Hand comes fully around. Boom, leg lace right there, two points. We got a small mat here, so we don't have room to do it twice. But the thing about it is, you know, once it's locked up, it's locked up. You know, so that's, that's really one of the biggest things. Um, so I guess like from there, I'm just covering, you know, uh, short offense, head hand defense, gut wrench, uh, single leg. I mean, is there anything specific anybody that's on the call would like to see? I'm um, just trying to cover high, um, high level points, things that we cover right now, just cause it's freestyle season. You know, that's kind of our focus. We wrestle Greco folk style as well as, but you know, we're competing in freestyle this weekend. So that's kind of where our focus is. So, uh, does anybody have any questions that you guys want to drop off in the chat? Um, any technique that you want to see, whether it's on the feet, um, top, bottom, freestyle, folk style, Greco, uh, anything you guys want to see, I'm happy to kind of review. Okay, uh, from there, let's just uh, go from there. We can just do a, um, a gator roll from the front, right? So we can have Al do it. You can do it on Carter. So one of the things to do on a head hand defense, because it's freestyle season, is if you have somebody and you're in a front head and it's tight and some, your arm's deeper than you want it to be, because it is freestyle season, there is a gator roll you can hit right here. So Al locks it tight and then he's gonna go left, right? So as he does, he's gonna roll through his back but make sure he continues to go. Boom, points for Carter. But one of the big things that we've been working on with Carter this year is even though you get turned right there, you gotta belly out. Because if Carter, like come back this way so you can go twice Al. Because if Carter stays up and he doesn't belly out, Al's gonna, he's going to roll him twice. So there's the first time. There's the second time. Don't hurt him, Al. He's off the mat. So, again, if they come back this way, and Al goes ahead and he hits it the first time, Carter bellies out. Al didn't have the ability to go again, right? Al, he's going to try, but again, Carter's in a good spot to where he could defend himself and hopefully get brought back up to his feet and give up two, not four, right? So that's just something simple right there. Let's see. Do you have move, takedown? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Spooner, hopefully I answer your question. So if, uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, we can do this. We just did it the other day. So Al, it's gonna be off an underhook, right? So underhook to a knee pick. So right here, so come this way so he has room because we're gonna do this for four. So if Al has an underhook right here and say he wants to attack the near leg, but Carter's being a good partner and he's gonna pull it back, Al's just gonna run through, pick his knee, throw it, 
and there's a couch in the way, and we have little room, but in theory, that would be feet to back for four. So, here, Al, you want to show them the whole series? Yeah. So, the first thing that we're doing is we're going to try to attack the near leg, and as he goes, and he goes to throw it by and attack, boom, we're right into a single, right? So, assume that doesn't work because Carter has good defense, and he goes, he tries to throw it by, boom, he's going to knee pick him, right? He's going to run it right through, take him down. Now, assuming that that doesn't work because he tries the near leg, he tries the knee pick, it's not there, Al's going to grab his wrist and he's just going to duck the other side. And then he can finish high crotch double. He can throw him for five, I guess, if he wants to. But whatever you want to do right there, that's kind of uh, the, would be my recommendation. And the way that we do it, it's really just about chain wrestling. It's not like it's anything you know, crazy or just some new age wrestling. It's, you know, you got to attack. Sometimes to be the good kid, you got to have two shots, three shots, four shots, right? And you got to just continue to shoot as you can put pressure on them. So for us, everything that we do, it's all off a of series. So just off of that, that was three different, like from an underhook, that's three different leg attacks. But it's really about your partner's reaction. If he gives you one look and you don't like it, go to the other one. If he defends that as well, you can go ahead and duck the other side. There's very few kids in this country that's going to stop four shots. Right? And if they are, that's the kid you got to beat to win a national title. So, but that's kind of what we drill with our kids, right? It's not about the first shot. It's not about the second. It might be the third, but you got to have chain wrestling. And if you can put them together, especially you start throwing re-attacks to where somebody attacks you, and then you can attack right back to the leg. Um, I mean, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to beat. So, actually, that's, a, that's actually a good point. So, Mav, Jake, we can do a re-attack here. So, as we go here... So say uh, Jake's going to take a shot on Mav. Mav's going to give him a little bit of room, but right from there, he's going to take a shot right back. Boom. Right there. Right? So instead of the first shot being there, he's going to have to go to a second. So he takes the first shot. Mav's got good defense. Not there. Boom. Comes to the other leg. Now Jake has a chance. So even if Mav's going to do it. So Jake takes a shot. Or Mav takes a shot. First one's not there. Boom. Come with the second one. Boom, that should be four. In Indiana, they might have gave you five because they were terrible. But, so if we do it again, so Matt takes his first shot. First shot's not there, but he stays, he stays cocked and ready to attack, right? One of the biggest things that Matt has going for him is when he go ahead and takes a shot, he's not just trying to finish. He comes right back to his feet. He stays cocked in position, ready to take that second shot. So, right there, I think that's kind of a... Man, Spooner, you got a lot of questions here, bud. All right. <laughs> so, but the, the biggest thing on our feet is just reattacks, right? Like you might get the first one, you might get the second one. But if you have more shots in your arsenal, the better likelihood you have uh, to be able to score. But let's see. How about on top? Not lace or gut? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could do that. We could do a crotch lift, right? Like one of the things that we get into is if Mav gets down and he takes a shot, Right, and Jake's trying to defend. Sometimes Jake can get around the corner, locks in his crotch, goes at steps around. Big step, big throw. <laughs> yeah, actually, so just don't actually, don't actually throw him. <laughs> don't actually throw him. Sorry about that. But so if he, he does it again, here, do it on Carter. So if Carter takes the shot and Jake, he's getting beat around, he steps around, big squat, big lift, and he throws Carter. All right, we're going to have Jake stop throwing people before he hurts somebody. But that's, that's really what we're looking for, right? So if you can't get around the corner and your hips get beat, one of the things you could do is step around. And as you step around, you could lock right in the crotch. So that would, be, uh, that would be another suggestion I have of just not a lace, not a gut, but in freestyle season, a great chance to score points. Perfect. Do you want to show? Uh, so just kind of building on that, which um, Jake wants to show something on top. So just flatten out, Carter. So Jake goes ahead and gets on top. As he locks up there, comes to the side, gets up, gets up, gets up, boom. Quick points right there. So go a little bit out and come back this way, Jake, just so they can see it one more time. So as we're coming right there, he locks tight around the knee, pulls him up, elevates, sits him back, boom. But the whole time, you see how Jake comes back out on top? He wants to make sure that he has control over him. So when his partner's back down, Jake's ready to score again. Let's see. When working with younger kids, what are the types of things you would emphasize? Okay, so I guess it would depend on how young we're talking about. But for me, uh, especially when you get started, especially when I have kids that are uh, in middle school or below, especially elementary kids, 
we just got to make it fun, right? Like you want to make sure that kids enjoy coming to practice. It's not serious at that time. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of kids at a young age that compete at a high level, but you want to make it fun, right? It's not about cutting weight. It's not about, you know, just grinding and just driving them into the floor. It's not about three days. Really, it's about making it fun, making it engaging, and making it so they can understand and comprehend what you're doing. And as you work on series, if you build on top of each other, one after another, so they're working with repetitive material, it's usually easier for them to comprehend. But you also got to know your kids, right? So a lot of my kids are analytical, right? They want to know everything. I got to break it down and explain to them step by step of this is how it works. All right, first, I need a good setup. First, I need a good leg attack. Then after I get a leg attack, it's about the finish. But I got to have two finishes in case he stops my first one, right? Some kids learn well that way, but some kids don't, right? Some kids, it's about I need to play with it, right? Like I need to know what works and what doesn't, but unless I'm in the position, unless I'm rolling around, I'm not gonna know. So one of the big things that we do with our younger kids to make sure that they understand the positions we're trying to help them get better at is we do a lot of situational wrestling. So even though we're going live, I'm gonna put you at a disadvantage. Uh, oftentimes, I'll just tell kids, lock up the tightest gut you can, <laughs> right? And the bottom guy, good luck, right? Or sometimes it's like, all right, get as deep a double as you want. And, you know, you got to learn to wrestle through it because somebody might just be deep on a shot and you still have to defend. But it's just about figuring out how that kid learns and making your curriculum adapt to him. Because you can't just teach blanketly across because not everybody will comprehend that way, especially when they're younger. So that's kind of where I start. But I think the biggest advice I can give when you're talking about young elementary school kids is to make it fun. Right? Make sure they want to come back. Make sure they're playing, you know, wall ball or, you know, like uh, whatever game you want to play. But at the end of the day, I remember being little and I remember wanting to go to play games at practice and go hang out with my friends. It wasn't about competing. It wasn't about winning national titles. It wasn't about state championships. None of it. It was just about a fun place to go hang out with my friends um, and have a good time. And we also, through that, learned uh, just work ethic. Right, so I think that's the biggest thing, is just keeping kids engaged and making sure that they're having fun. So uh, I guess what other questions do we have for the, uh, anything in the chat? Spooner, I know you got another question out there. What do you got, bud? And the best part about this is just so you guys know, Anthony Spooner that is in the chat, uh, he's actually going to run this next week. So uh, we'll be up in Cleveland. He's a coach for Beat the Streets Cleveland. Um, and uh, they do great things up there, man. They're just <laughs> being around them. It's, it's inspiring to see what they do. They're, they're changing kids' lives one at a time. And it's, it's awesome. It's something that we're striving to do here in Columbus, but they're a little bit ahead of us in Cleveland and we love to partner with them. Um, a short plug is we do have a Jay Jaggers and a Tony Ramos uh, camp coming up. It's actually, uh, it's free. Um, it's at Benedictine High School up in Cleveland on June 26th. And uh, if you check any of our social media, um, you'll see it everywhere because we've been promoting it pretty hard. Um, but it's a chance to learn from national champions. Um, they're both associate head coaches. Um, should be D1 head coaches here shortly, I would assume. Um, and it, like I said, it's free. So uh, what they're doing in Beat the Streets Cleveland is awesome, but what they do in Beat the Streets across the country is just amazing. And uh, yeah, we're happy to partner with them whenever they'll allow. So uh, with that, uh, is there any other questions um, that you guys have or Anything else you want to see uh, technique-wise or just any questions general on the philosophy, um, kind of how we run our program, the way our practices are set up, uh, anything like that? Give it a minute to get back in the chat. And I think that kind of one thing that I'll say, and, uh, you know, this is <laughs> very different um, than most places, but the, the, one of the things that we do with our club uh, in Columbus is we practice Monday through Thursday. Um, and the whole reason we do that is because we're coaching kids. And at the end of the day, Friday through Sunday, I want them to go be kids. I want them, my kids love to fish. I want them out on the water, right? Like my kid, <laughs> like they just love to be outside. They love to do, go pick mushrooms, go play in the mud, whatever they want to do. We want to allow them to be kids. But Monday through Thursday, when we're at practice, we expect you to work hard. Right. But that's why we limit practice to an hour and 15. You know, maybe on our long day, it's an hour and a half. But we don't do two hour practices. We don't do two and a half hour, two and a half hour practices, because for us, we want you engaged and we want you working hard while we're there. But also I tell them what we're going to do. I'm not one of those coaches that say, hey, we got five more and then we do 10. I tell you exactly what we're going to do. I'll give you the whole lift, whether it's Monday or Wednesday and we're lifting. If it's Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, like depending if we have open mats that week or whatever it is. Um, 
you know, for us, it's just, it's about working hard when you got them, making sure that they know that you're there for them, whether it's wrestling or life or anything that comes their way, but then also allowing them to go be kids. And I think that's the biggest thing that's missed in most amateur athletics now, because everything's gotten so competitive. At the end of the day, we're here to win. But with that said, I would rather have them outside being kids than inside worrying about whatever is the drama in the wrestling world that day. So I think that's really my biggest advice I have for all coaches, all parents, all athletes. Enjoy it. Your time will go quick, but also enjoy being a kid because you're a kid, right? We have kids that are 11. We have kids that are in high school. We have pro fighters, amateur fighters, UFC fighters. It doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, there's more to life than the sport. And don't get me wrong, the sport changed my life. I love it. But also, I enjoy life outside of wrestling, and it's important that your kids do too. So that's kind of like the big message I have for this. Um, other than that, we can think of a couple, a couple more technique things. Um, come here, Carter. So if Carter grabs on Jake, I guess Carter, what do you want to show? What do you want to show? Show, show a leg attack. What's your, what's your favorite go-to shot? You got, you got two points you need. What are you doing? Talk to the people, Carter. Explain them what you're doing. I'm probably just going to do a, probably a power double. Okay. Straight. Straight to the back. Straight to the back for four. All right. Jake, show me your favorite takedown. You got to give it two. What is it? I like to go to a underhook single leg, and I don't go all the way down to the mat for freestyle or regular even because I don't like to get in the sticky situations where you're on a leg and you're extended and stuff, so... I go right here, make sure you have head position inside. I like to hit the head, pop this up, and then walk right here. Because then if I lock down here, he's able to turn down and kick out. But if I lock up high, you can't do that. So I'm right here, head inside, pop right here. And then if it's freestyle, I will turn it down a little bit and go right here for my gut. But if it's folk style, I like to go right here and run around. Which that could work in freestyle too, because right here is a leg lease off of it. So. Perfect. Come here, Al. Show me your favorite takedown. On him. Oh, you can use your brother. Uh, does that have to be a shot? Yeah, it's got to be a shot. Okay. Uh, just a high crouch. So you collar tie as soon as they put their arm up. Hit it up. Get the high crouch. Lift them up. Drop them on their head. <laughs> Don't drop them on your head while you're drilling. Come here, Matt. Let's see your favorite takedown. Um, you could drill on Jake. Right, Explain so it to me. <clears throat> mine is like, it's a high crotch still, but like I go under as a hook, like that. And then I like, it's like a duck under, but with a underhook. Do that, and then I finish. Go ahead, finish. Okay. Good. So? That is, uh, that's our middle schoolers and their favorite uh, offensive takedowns. I guess, uh, do we have any, uh, let's see, how young should the kids, well, I started at five, which that's not for everybody. But again, like at an age that level, like it depends. I have plenty of friends that have clubs that they have kids that young that come to train, but they don't compete, right? It's just fun. They go to practice twice a week, once a week, whatever it may be, as much of their schedule allows, but they're not competing. Um, for me, I think it's whenever a kid's ready, you know, but I think we encourage all of our athletes to be multi-sport athletes. We're not one of those clubs that say, hey, you can only play, um, you can only wrestle. I think, uh, I'm pretty sure all of my kids here today, they all play football. Um, and we support them, right? And when they have football practice, they go to football, but when they don't, they're at wrestling, right? We have kids that do track. We have kids that play baseball. We have kids that swim. We have kids that do cross country. Um, and we encourage kids to be kids, right? Go try everything. So I think the sooner you can get into wrestling, the better, because, I mean, you're always learning. I mean, I'm 32 and still learning. I'm excited about our camp schedule because that's an opportunity for me to learn to some of the best that are out there, right? And I don't think you ever stop learning. So the sooner you can get into it, the better chance you have. But there's plenty of people that started in high school that end up being state champs. There's plenty of people that start in high school that go win national titles, Right, so it really just depends on the situation, but we encourage kids to try all sports. And if they, I have kids that started wrestling, they didn't like it, they went and played baseball, then they came back to wrestling and now they love it. It just kind of depends on the kid and the situation. So hopefully, Raymond, that answered your question. Um, let me look through the chat. I don't think we had many other questions here. Let's see, we got 
We got Spooner on. Let's see if I hit this. I'm about to bring you on camera, Spooner. Nope, can't bring him on the camera. All right, I was just gonna introduce uh, him as he's gonna do this next week. I guess, is there any other questions uh, out there that we can answer before we wrap this up? Go ahead and give it a couple minutes before, uh, see if anybody puts anything in the chat. But uh, I guess just kind of a quick club about uh, me and my club. Uh, like I said, we're in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we train out of Mortal MMA. Uh, Matt Brown is kind enough to let us train out of his gym. Uh, we practice four days a week. Um, if you ever you know, want to know more about the club, we are um, DB trained um, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you could look us up, up there. Um, I'm easy to find. Again, my name is DJ Bruce. Uh, I'm the head coach here. Uh, we're actually a nonprofit, so we are a 501c3. Um, so we do a lot of fundraising. So if there's anybody here that uh, would like, you know, to donate, uh, you're welcome to. Um, it, every dollar that you send goes straight to the kids. And whether that is, you know, covering rent for the month, whether that's a kid that can't afford to pay for an entry fee, whether that is, uh, you know, however we can invest in these kids in these future. Because as much as we want good wrestlers, and we do, trust me, we train hard, but we're about raising good humans, right? And that's our mission. And, you know, that's why we have a LinkedIn page. That's why, like, my kids have LinkedIn's. That's why we bring in people to talk to them about talking more than wrestling and just more about life, right? Because at the end of the day, at some point, the sport's going to end. And we want to make sure that all our kids have a path. And whether that path is trade school, if that's college, if that's I'm going to go get a job, I'm going to start a business, uh, we try to support them wherever they're at, you know, and I think that's more the part that excites me about this and being a nonprofit is just helping kids change their life like the sport of wrestling changed mine. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're about. So if you guys want more information, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not that hard to find. Um, follow us on social media. Um, we post quite a bit trying to just give our kids a platform and hopefully get them some scholarships. So uh, with that said, man, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you guys checking in. Um, we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks.